Well, we're talking about the economy and how people have been evicted from their homes. They don't have any money for groceries. Now they're out on the street and all the stuff that the government has issued has expired. The unemployment, all of that has expired. You know, about the rent and you don't have to pay your rent or anything. Don't, never, don't listen to them people. If you have your money, pay the rent. That's the best thing you can do is pay the rent. But in this instance, the lady uh, paid her rent, I think, up to six months. And now, you know, everything is exhausted. She done spent her um, savings. So her money is exhausted. She don't have any more. So here is a video from ABC News letting you know and letting you see some of the things that people are having to go through. All right? Y'all have a blessed day. Be blessed. God is good all the time. We have to trust and believe that God is going to bring us out of this. We know that he's able to do it. And we're just believing and trusting that God will make a way out of no way. Y'all have a great day. Disagree on unemployment insurance. Democrats want $600 a week. The Republican plan cuts it to 200 or two-thirds of lost wages, whichever is greater. Democrats are proposing $100 billion in rent relief and a one-year eviction moratorium. Republicans have not offered their own proposal on that, but President Trump suggests it should be on the table. We want to work on the eviction so that people don't get evicted. We work on the payment to the people. The rest of it was so far apart, we don't care. I think relief is coming. The question for a lot of tenants is, will it come in time, or will the eviction happen? A million Americans facing possible evictions with the end of the month now upon us. Our Clayton Sandell leads us off with the victims of Washington's inaction. It's just a panic all the time. That's all I am constantly in a state of panic. Lynette Hale wouldn't mind taking a time machine back to about seven months ago when life was pretty good. We were going out and eating. I could buy supper for all six of us. Uh, we would go to movies. We'd, you know, I could go buy groceries. Uh, just enjoying life. Hale ran a daycare business out of a house she rents in Aurora, Colorado. I had toys up here. I got pack and plays upstairs in a, in a bedroom up there. And we played down here and uh, had little tables set up in there that we ate lunch. But then came COVID got emails from all my parents one right after another almost it was just traumatizing because one email says that they will no longer be using me and then i got the next one and then the next one and then i just sat there because they were all gone her income gone hale used her savings to pay rent about twenty two hundred dollars a month but by july she was tapped out and now the landlord wants her out 30-day demand for rent or uh, possession. And somebody put this on your door? Yes. She won't make August rent either. I'm 70 years old and I'm about to be on the street. What are you going to do? I don't know. Do you have a place to go? I am looking at a uh, one-bedroom apartment, but still I have to have money to pay the rent. Hale is one of millions of Americans who are part of a growing wave of evictions that experts warn is about to come crashing down. The United States is facing the most severe housing crisis our country has ever seen. Approximately 30 to 40 million children and adults are facing eviction right now. To put this in perspective, in the entire year of 2016, 3.6 million evictions were filed. So in the truncated time period of just a few months, the United States is looking at three to four times that level. When the pandemic began, state and federal governments tried to soften the blow, pausing evictions and adding $600 a week to unemployment checks. But those lifelines are now expiring at midnight, and evictions are again ramping up, hitting the poor and people of color the hardest. Communities of color are at extremely high risks of eviction, even before the pandemic, but especially now. In one survey, almost 75% of Black and Hispanic renters had no cushion to cover three months of expenses. One of the other outcomes of eviction is that it, it results in voter suppression, that it is extremely challenging to participate in the vote and to participate in elections and in democracy when you are worried about keeping a roof over your head, where you're transitioning, where you have to change your address and other factors.
Tiggest Casa is a single mom with three kids living in Washington, D.C. Her unemployment checks aren't enough to cover the rent. We are worried because we cannot afford to pay rent. We have kids, my neighbor. They're not working, I'm not working. Casa attended a recent cancel the rent rally. We are fighting for our neighbor, for our community. Similar events are now popping up across the country, calling for rent forgiveness and a halt on evictions, which can have devastating long-term impacts. It affects your credit. It affects your ability to buy patients with numerous negative health outcomes, and it's particularly traumatizing for children who are set back academically. To try and help, Denver attorney Zach Newman co-founded the COVID-19 Eviction Defense Project, a team of lawyers offering free legal advice. I was on Facebook in late March, got on, people are posting about not being able to pay their rent, so threw a message up, said, if anyone's having trouble paying your rent, drop me a line, I'm happy to represent you in court or help you. Didn't get on for 24 hours, got back on the next day and had 500 messages. Newman says his team has so far helped about a thousand clients navigate a complicated web of laws, court battles, and impatient landlords. I don't think landlords are the bad guy in this story at all. Landlords are running businesses. They're trying to pay mortgages. Terry Schof is one of those landlords. It's a 26, about 2,600 square foot home, four bedrooms. She says when the pandemic hit, one of her tenants lost a job and stopped paying rent. They finally moved out, but she says she's now in the hole at least 10 grand. Her credit cards are maxed. She worries she might lose her own home. I'm not a big corporation. I'm a single person, you know, living on Social Security with the rental income to supplement. So people in my position, the mom and pop landlords, are really hurting. Making it